You've got identity in terms of feminism and gender-based issues. You have a lot of identity swirling around um, race and ethnicity. And so when you look at Maud, and this is what fascinates me about her, is her personal identity. When, when she died, her personal identity was then co-opted and morphed into uh, uh, an sort of an, an identity of commerce, an identity of industry, um, an identity of a provincial, uh, of a provincial identity. Yeah. The province has turned her into, into its own identity. Right. Come and see Nova Scotia. The, yeah. The, the bu bucolic images that she painted are really here. Yeah. This is what we're really all about. Yeah. We're the mm -hmm. playground. Yeah. And so, you know, what becomes of an identity when it's when it's lost its soul or a spirit, mm -hmm. which is what was so evident in her painting and in the way she lived her life, uh, what happens when, it, when that is lost to the avenues and channels of commerce? Yeah. What are you left with? Right. You're left with mod soap. Yeah. You're left with, with mod socks and aprons yeah. and, and erasers. So yeah. you, you, her, her identity has your life with the auction house yeah. mm -hmm. identity, right? Mm -hmm. And so, what the way I see it is by by allowing her art to inspire us mm -hmm. is is a way of re-addressing what her identity was all about. That's good. You know who she was, and and sometimes it's a correction. Sometimes it just adds more questions. Right. But, but even if it adds more questions, the questions are valid and should be addressed mm -hmm. and should be th thought about, right? Mm -hmm. well, I don't know. Um, because I've heard it said at that book talk, I was at, um, well, you just look at her paintings, they were joyful. She, therefore, she was joyful. <laughs> and then someone else said, well, actually, it's more like that's what she, that was her escape. That was what, you know, she, uh, yeah. her memories, her... You know. There's two, if you look at yeah. the Maud House, and, and see this is what's neat about when, when we started exchanging ideas and, and um, writing about Maud, and is, is invariably you start to probe the, the, the nature of the objects that made her so renowned. And yeah. the house is obviously, the, this humble yeah. structure is so important. When you look at that house, the window that stands out is the window that she looked through when she was painting. Mm -hmm. when she was sitting there with her TV table, mm -hmm. TV tray, and as, a, as a sort of an ad, uh, an ad hoc easel, and painting away because of her arthritis. That window looks out to the highway where humanity passed. But there's another window, mm -hmm. and it's a small one, but it would have looked out to the adjacent property. Yeah. She may or may not have seen the poor farm directly, yeah. mm -hmm. but that window would have would have been a conscious directive yeah. mm -hmm. for her uh, in regards to that uh, yeah. that poor farm uh, structure, which was very imposing, and that is another narrative, yeah. and and that's the narrative that we've gone down. Right, because I remember when you initially said you you said. Uh, you know their property is like you know this far away from the poor farm and I was like yeah so what <laughs> I just sort of dismissed it but yeah, yeah. it's huge it's it huge is. because oh, that was those were her neighbors yeah. that was her community that was you know and that says something about people right it makes what she did even more amazing I think